more than likely this will be a road trip trying to figure out how I can get to the end of this idea. It is kind of cloudy, looks a little stormy, but it's perfect to sit in front of this window and get some bit of lighting. As I share a little bit about how I was able to finally be consistent with praying daily and praying throughout each day. I used to think that prayer honestly had to be this rigid structure of, let's take the Acts method, for example. It had, it had to be adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and, and supplication. And the Acts method, for example, isn't bad at all. Having that guideline of, this is what I'm praying, this is how I'm going to pray, isn't bad. But I think it paralyzed me from actually praying daily and praying often because I was legalistic with how my prayers had to be. If they didn't, if I didn't hit a certain type of prayer or a certain thing, then I didn't feel like it was qualified to be a prayer worthy of God, which in hindsight, I know is so backwards and so not who God is. But in my mind, I was like, this is what will make a prayer powerful. But it wasn't really until I want to say 2021 that I can think clearly to a time where I was down bad and needed to go to God as my father rather than go to God as some distant person that I needed to approach a certain way. So my wife and I, we had, when we were dating, we had broken up for a season because ultimately I just wasn't obeying the Lord the way I should have, and therefore it translated into disobedience in our dating relationship. Maybe one day we can talk more about that, but for now, we were just at that time not obeying the Lord in a way that we should. And so when we broke up, it was the best thing, but also the worst thing because obviously a breakup is not easy. And it was so hard to go through because I didn't want to break up. It was, well, I did want to break up, but the actual breakup itself is not fun to go through. But what I realized during that time was I would go up on our parking garage of our campus every evening to watch the sunset and just pour out my heart to God. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything rigid, but it was just an act of being honest and being real with God and pouring that out to him and allowing him to heal what I've what I had been not hiding from him because I can't hide anything from God, but reserving for myself because of pride, thinking I could resolve it myself. It had even gotten to a point where I'd be on the top of the parking garage and sometimes campus safety would come up and be like, hey, um, everything all right, all good. We had some reports sometimes of people goofing off in the top here and we just want to check in to make sure everything's all good. I was like, yeah, I'm all good. I'm just chilling up here praying. And, um, I mean, unfortunately, I don't know if I said I was praying, but um, I was just like, yeah, I'm good. But I would spend so much time up there talking with God that it changed the way that I related and talked to God and talked with God. And I think that's the mentality that you need to start with or you need to get to where talking to God and praying is a conversation. And I know that's overused, but it really is. It's a conversation where I heard in this book, actually, Tim Keller, Tim Keller's book, Prayer. He said, scripture is the launching pad or the, the diving board into prayer. It's also how God speaks and how he responds. So I remember questioning my identity and not in a way where I was unsure of who I am, but questioning of, God, what do you really say about me? Then I was reminded of 2 Corinthians 5.17, which says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And hearing that, saying, wait, I'm a new creation. The old is gone, and now I can live in my identity in Christ, was something that, if I hadn't read, maybe the Lord would have revealed it to me. But allowing that to be how God spoke to me, was indicative of being in the word. The connection is that I just poured out my heart to the Lord. I said, God, who do you say that I am? And how can I truly follow you and be your child? How can I be your son that's faithful and obedient to you? And that was a verse that he brought to me. And I was reminded of in that season. 
let me just preface and say that that was an example of something that happened during that time. I don't want to be like, this is exactly what happened because I can't remember exactly my prayers during that time, but I do know how authentic and real those prayers were in that season. I feel like I need to get close to this window because I'm trying to get the best possible, but then I kind of like go back and it's all dark. So I think this is a good spot, but I also don't want to be too close to the camera because I don't know. You guys want to be up close and personal? Probably not. I remember back in 2017, I put a reminder on my phone that just said, talk to God. And I never took it off. And every morning to this day, it still goes off at 7 a.m., sometimes 8 a.m. when the time changes. And part of me is like, oh, I should just take this off. I know how to talk to God. I've been consistent with talking to God. But a part of me is like, no, just leave it on there because I never know when I might need that because oftentimes I don't clear it until the end of the day. And I'm like, wait, I didn't talk to God. Let me clear it. But as I'm going throughout my days, having a little reminder like that, though it's so small, is so effective. The simple act of just clearing the notification each day is almost muscle memory to say, oh wait, I need to clear this clear this notification because I've done it. Or if I haven't done it, I see it and I say, wait, let me just take a second to connect with my father. All right, now's the time in the video where I kind of lose my train of thought because I had a strong opening and I was like, I know what I'm gonna say here. And then I kind of lose uh, my steam. It's something I'm trying to work on in these videos because I want to be able to communicate in a long time and tell a good story, but sometimes I lose steam. So here we go. Here's what I wrote down. You ready for this? Okay. Daily reminders. I got that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, perfect. Glad I took a little bit of notes before this. Going back to what I said at the beginning about how I truly just started admiring God. Actually, no, I don't know if I said that. I think I just spoiled it. Just talking to God about anything. That's what I started to do in that season in 2021. I feel like I turned up the heat on that, but started it once I got to college and truly started following Jesus. There were seasons prior to college where I was feeling insecure or, or wrestling with things and I cried out to God in those seasons, but those were just momentary times of connecting with God authentically. So once I got to college and truly started owning my relationship with Christ, I felt like, let me just talk to God and connect with him as a friend. And let me point out and, and admire the things that he's created in everyday life. Currently, I will try to find time to go outside and either go on a prayer walk, a nature walk. And during that time, I will see the things around me that I so often take for granted and praise God for them. I'll see the, the grass and I'll say, God, thank you for the grass and the way that it looks so beautiful if it's well maintained. But even if it's not well maintained, it's still beautiful because it's nature and it's, and it's pure. I say thank you for the palm trees, the way that it reminds me of this time where I first came to Tampa and started living my life and planting my roots down here in Tampa. Thank you for the wind and the beautiful sunset that it that it looks like you just painted this beautiful sky and, and have your fingerprints all over it. And then I go into thanking God for the way my, my body moves and the way that my body functions and how I so easily take it for granted because in a season right now where I got blood work done for like the first time in a so long and in a while and got some results back that were not shocking but different than what I was expecting it's it's a little bit frightening because I feel like nobody expects to nobody nobody really wants to go through the trials and go through discomfort but often the discomfort and the uncertainty makes me rely on the Lord more and just press hard into him. So I started making it a routine to admire God and admire the things in my life. I heard a Tim Keller sermon today that I was listening to in preparation for meeting with a small group of guys that I've been meeting with uh, regularly for the past, I think, year now. And something he said in it that I thought was so strong. He said, if God, oh, sorry, that was kind of gross. Hold on. If God is a creator, then everything he creates is art. And I thought, wow, that is so true. Because art 
is designed by a creator. And if it's art, then it has something to be admired about, or it has some quality to be admired. That resonated because it confirmed, not that I needed confirmation, but that I can just go to God and, and admire the things around me in my life that he's designed, that he's, he's, what's the word? He's orchestrated. I guess that's, that's the perfect word, that he's orchestrated in my life. When you get to a spot in life and realize that our God is a relational God, he knows you and wants you to know him personally and intimately, it changes your perspective and it's changing my perspective time after time. I think I know God and then as time goes on, I learn more about God and truly just want to be with God. The more I learn about God and the more I truly relate to God as I relate to my wife or relate to my best friend or relate to my parents, the more I can fall in love with him. Because if anything, those those human relationships compare so so far down the list as to how I can relate and fall more in love with Jesus. Hopefully part of this made sense or some of this resonated with you or some of this impacted you because following Jesus is, I heard it somewhere, following Jesus is the greatest adventure. And I truly believe that and I want you to experience the fullness and the joy of going to God with everything and relating to him and and being intimate with him and falling in love with him as life progresses. It's just so refreshing to talk to God after a long day or talk to God during the day because while everything in my life isn't guaranteed to be certain and consistent, the one thing I know to be certain and consistent is God, his voice, and his word. So even right now, as I say this, I realize how much I am in need of his love, his grace, his kindness, and my faithfulness and obedience to him. It's so refreshing to be in sync with God and to be walking closely with him. And that's my heart. I just want, I want to see people follow Jesus with all that they have because there is no greater experience and no greater thing in this world that will satisfy like him. If you got value out of this, just let me know in the comments. and Let me know what your thoughts are because I would love to hear them. And it is encouraging to read that this has impacted someone because I feel like the Lord is leading me in this direction on this channel of what I have been doing the past couple of months. And reading those comments is, I feel like the comments are the fruit of what I'm doing. So I don't know. I haven't processed it, but some initial thoughts. Okay. I'm landing the plane now because I keep trying to end this and I don't know how. So love you. Thanks for watching. On the screen now is a video that I would actually love for you to watch next. So join me over there in that video. I feel like something that scares me is that I'm not communicating properly. I don't know. I was looking up YouTube videos around the similar topic to see some thumbnail ideas for this and I was like, man, I didn't mention the Lord's Prayer. Am I failing as, I don't know, am I failing as a Christian? And I think, I think that's honestly the legalistic part of me that's like, hey, if you don't talk about this, you're failing. Because I know that's not God's heart and God's mind. At least I think that's not God's heart and God's mind. I think the fact that I'm trying to encourage you to fall more in love with Jesus and pray more consistently is pleasing to the Lord. And I think I need to rest in that. So I am now just outwardly processing, but I think that's okay because we're processing together. So, okay. Well, now actually we're done. So.